Imagine a future where no missile, no matter how fast or elusive, can touch American soil. A future where threats from the sky are met with lasers, satellites, and space-based interceptors. In May 2025, President Donald Trump unveiled a project to turn this vision into reality. It's called the Golden Dome for America, and with a staggering $175 billion price tag, it could change the way we think about national security forever. But can this futuristic shield deliver on its promise? Or are we stepping into a dangerous new era of space warfare? In this episode, we'll uncover everything there is to know about this groundbreaking project. Stay tuned. If Golden Dome sounds familiar, it's because it echoes Ronald Reagan's 1980s Strategic Defense Initiative, or SDI, which is commonly known as the Star Wars program a bold but ultimately unrealized effort to deploy space weapons. Since then, the U.S. has invested in a patchwork of systems. Ground-based mid-course defense LOL, Aegis ships with SM-3 missiles, and the THAAD system. These programs have shown mixed results. Now, the Golden Dome aims to go beyond anything previously imagined, integrating space-based tracking, interceptors, and even laser weapons into one seamless defense network. Much like SDI, the Golden Dome hinges on the hope that technological advancement will catch up to visionary ambition. But unlike in the 1980s, today's threats are not hypothetical. They're real, they're fast, and they're already being used on the battlefield. That urgency is what gives the Golden Dome both its momentum and its controversy. So, why now? The urgency lies in how global threats have evolved. China and Russia are no longer just experimenting. They're actively deploying next-generation weapons built to sidestep traditional missile defenses. We're talking about hypersonic glide vehicles that can maneuver at speeds beyond Mach 5, fractional orbital bombardment systems that loop around the planet before striking, and stealthy cruise missiles flying so low they slip beneath radar coverage. These aren't theoretical future threats. They're here. Russia has already launched hypersonic missiles in Ukraine, demonstrating their battlefield effectiveness. China has tested similar weapons publicly, sending a clear signal of their readiness. And with rising tensions across the Indo-Pacific, the idea of missile warfare reaching American soil is no longer far-fetched. It's a looming reality. And the only real question left is, are we prepared? Unfortunately, the answer today is sobering. U.S. missile defenses were designed in an era of predictable threats, when ballistic missiles followed fixed arcs and could be intercepted with enough warning. But that model is no longer relevant. We now face threats that don't follow the rules. They fly lower, faster, and with precision-guided agility. That's where the concept of the Golden Dome comes in. A new, layered approach built for this generation of warfare. The Golden Dome envisions a web of defenses stretching across domains. Satellites would monitor launches in real time, constantly scanning the globe. Orbital interceptors could engage targets in the vacuum of space long before they descend. Closer to home, ground-based radars and sea-launched interceptors would serve as another line of defense. And for pinpoint, rapid response action, high-energy laser weapons could offer a final, decisive layer, striking with the speed of light. To understand why this is so critical, we need to look at the threats in detail. Ballistic missiles are the old guard, still dangerous, still capable, but they follow arcs that legacy systems were built to counter. Today's real concern lies with newer, smarter weapons. Hypersonic glide vehicles move fast and fly low, weaving through air defenses like a needle through cloth. Russia has used them. China has shown them off. They are real. They are operational. And they are difficult to stop. Then there are the orbital threats. Fractional orbital bombardment systems travel around the Earth before suddenly diving toward their targets. They don't give off traditional warning signs and are nearly impossible to predict. Even re-entry vehicles have evolved. Some now maneuver as they descend, 
changing direction mid-flight and rendering interception a guess rather than a guarantee. And just beneath the radar, literally, cruise missiles and drone swarms pose a different kind of nightmare. These are low-flying, evasive, and when deployed in numbers, can overwhelm even the most modern defense systems. It's not just about speed anymore. It's about complexity, unpredictability, and the sheer volume of attacks. What all these weapons have in common is a deliberate design to exploit the gaps in our current defenses. They operate in that narrow space between what's fast enough to evade detection and smart enough to defeat a response. The battlefield is no longer measured in miles or minutes. It's measured in milliseconds. And it's not limited to land, air, or sea. Space is now part of the front line. If we want to stay ahead, we need to think differently faster, smarter, across every domain. So, why the current defenses fall short? America's current missile defense network is advanced, but it's not enough. Radars miss low-flying threats. Satellites can't track fast maneuvering targets. Interceptors take time to reach optimal speed. The new threats demand a faster, smarter, and more integrated response. Today's defense systems like Patriot and NASAMS are excellent at neutralizing conventional cruise missiles and aircraft, but they were never designed to shoot down objects moving at Mach 10 or gliding just above the treetops. And when missiles are launched from orbital platforms or obscure trajectories like over the South Pole, current systems are nearly blind. Even worse, these systems often function in isolation unable to communicate or integrate with other layers of defense. The Golden Dome intends to change that, creating a truly unified architecture where space-based and terrestrial assets work together seamlessly. This new project is designed to counter threats at every critical stage of a missile's flight. In the pre-launch phase, the system relies on advanced surveillance networks and cyber warfare tools to locate and potentially disable enemy launch systems before they can fire. The idea is to neutralize the threat at its source long before it ever leaves the ground. If a missile does manage to launch, the boost phase presents the next window of opportunity. During this short but vulnerable stage, when the missile is glowing hot and easily detectable, interceptors are deployed to strike while the target is still climbing through the atmosphere. Should the missile reach the mid-course phase, where it travels through the vacuum of space, orbital interceptors guided by artificial intelligence step in to track and eliminate the threat with precision and speed. Finally, if an enemy missile manages to penetrate these defenses and approach its target in the terminal phase, ground-based and sea-based laser systems, along with interceptor missiles, provide the last line of defense. These systems are designed for fast, pinpoint strikes to stop incoming warheads in their final moments. Supporting this layered defense architecture is a suite of cutting-edge technologies. Thousands of satellites offer continuous, real-time global surveillance, ensuring no launch goes undetected. Space-based interceptors deliver rapid mid-course engagement, while established ground-based systems like ground-based mid-course defense and Aegis provide overlapping coverage closer to home. In the terminal phase, directed energy weapons, high-powered lasers, serve as a final, decisive tool to neutralize threats instantly. All these components are brought together under a unified command structure that integrates the expertise and resources of the U.S. Space Force, the Missile Defense Agency, and North American Aerospace Defense Command. Artificial intelligence powers the system's decision-making, prioritizing threats and coordinating complex, multi-domain responses in real time. This seamless integration of technology and command ensures that the Golden Dome remains vigilant, adaptive, and ready against the most advanced missile threats of the modern era. This project is no easy feat. Many required technologies, like laser weapons and orbital interceptors, are still in development. Operating in space means extreme temperatures, radiation, and debris hazards. Even with initial funding of $25 billion, 
total costs may soar past $500 billion over two decades, according to Congressional Budget Office estimates. The challenge doesn't stop at engineering. Coordinating such a vast system with human decision-makers and artificial intelligence poses a serious ethical and operational challenge. False alarms, AI misjudgments, and cyber vulnerabilities could all spell disaster in a tightly coupled, rapid-response defense net. Then there's the issue of timelines. Trump envisions a fully operational Golden Dome by 2029, but experts warn this is wildly optimistic. Prototypes may be ready, but a global integrated shield? That's likely a decade or more away. In the meantime, the US remains vulnerable. China and Russia see this as a threat, not just to their missile programs, but to the balance of power. They argue it violates the spirit of the Outer Space Treaty and accuse the US of weaponizing space. If the Golden Dome moves forward, we could see new arms races, more anti-satellite weapons, and even preemptive cyber attacks. For allies, the Golden Dome is both a shield and a signal. It could reinforce deterrence and offer shared defense architecture to partners like Japan, Australia, and NATO states. But it could also provoke escalation, pushing adversaries to develop countermeasures like decoys, saturation attacks, and electronic warfare tools. Diplomatically, the Golden Dome may force new arms control negotiations or, conversely, strain existing ones. Questions around weaponization of space and the militarization of low Earth orbit could become central issues at the United Nations and other global forums. There's also a moral dimension. Placing weapons in space could set a dangerous precedent. While the Outer Space Treaty bans weapons of mass destruction in orbit, it's vague on kinetic interceptors or lasers. Are we ready for a future where battles begin and end in space? And what about oversight? With such an enormous budget and far-reaching implications, how much transparency will the public have? Will congressional committees monitor progress? Or will much of it fall under classified programs with little public scrutiny? The legal framework is murky. International law lags behind technology. Who governs satellite shootdowns? How do we define an act of war in space? These questions must be answered before the first interceptor is launched. Domestically, the Golden Dome raises tough questions. Can we justify spending hundreds of billions on a defense system while facing crises in healthcare, climate, and infrastructure? Will this investment make Americans safer or simply shift the threat landscape? There's also a cultural dimension. The Golden Dome reflects a distinctly American response to fear. Build bigger, smarter shields. But are we also avoiding the harder work of diplomacy and arms control? Can technology alone guarantee peace? It also raises concerns about civil liberties. In the name of missile defense, could surveillance systems be turned inward? Could AI-powered threat detection expand beyond military use into domestic policy? These are uncomfortable questions worth asking. The Golden Dome isn't just a program, it's a glimpse into the future of war. A future dominated by AI, lasers, hypersonics, and orbital battlefields. It offers tremendous promise, but also immense peril. Experts suggest that success may lie in hybrid strategies, combining cutting-edge technology with robust diplomacy. Arms control must evolve alongside hardware. Transparency and global cooperation will be crucial to prevent the weaponization of space from spiraling out of control. There is also a commercial dimension. As private companies like SpaceX expand their role in space launches and satellite deployment, the line between civilian and military infrastructure is blurring. Will private satellites become legitimate targets in future conflicts? The implications are profound. The Golden Dome is more than a defense system. It's a bold vision of 21st century warfare one that combines satellites, lasers, and AI in a bid to make America missile-proof. But with that ambition comes risk. Technological risk, financial risk, and the risk of escalating global tensions. So, the question is this. Will the Golden Dome become a historic leap in defense innovation or a billion-dollar step towards space militarization? Only time will tell. Let us know your thoughts in the comments.
Is the Golden Dome the future of security or a dangerous gamble? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the evolving face of modern warfare.